Hi there, Language Arts Lady here. Welcome to another episode of 10 Minute Grammar. This is episode number five, and it is about adverbs. So uh, we have been working on the parts of speech, uh, introduction, and order. So we're gonna have a lot more coming up. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to parts of speech. But there are so many things to think about when you consider parts of speech as far as like introduction, order, uh, usability of them right away. Because remember, grammar is for speaking and writing, right? So we want to be able to use grammar in writing, not just have grammar be an isolated topic that is not able to be used correctly when students write. So we are going to go back to the beginning here. The first few parts of speech we had so far have been noun markers, or also called articles, and a the, three little words, tell you that a noun is about to be heard. And a the, all right? And then we had um, nouns, because noun markers mark nouns. They tell us that a noun is coming. A noun marker tells us that a noun is either coming immediately, or there might be a describer and then a noun, but it's coming soon. So noun marker slash article, then noun. And um, of course, that is a person, place, thing, or idea. All right, then we back up, backed up a little bit to adjectives. And if you remember my three criteria for order of parts of speech, number one is that we teach for grammar. So we teach to build sentences. All right, so that's gonna be our goal right away is how quickly can we get students using these parts of speech to write as opposed to just doing worksheets and exercises with the parts of speech. Secondly, teach each one close to something that it is used with. So either something that it describes or something that it modifies or something that it introduces. So that's why we started with noun markers slash articles and then nouns because they mark nouns. Then we moved into adjectives because adjectives describe nouns, right? So we had the cat with the noun markers and the nouns, and then we added sneaky, the sneaky cat, because adjectives describe nouns. So we're keeping that all real tight in there, and we are keeping things that go together that have something to do with each other. Then the uh, next one was verbs, and uh, that was last week, and that moved us right into sentence building. The sneaky cat climbs. All right, so fourth part of speech, but it moved us right into um, sentence building because you only really need a subject and a verb, right? Check out my caves posters and my teachers pay teacher store, capital, all makes sense, verb, in mark, subject, caves. The five parts of a sentence, the five things that are needed to make a sentence a sentence. So we already have it with the cat climbs right? So we are building sentences right away. So many things that we can do at this point in the parts of speech teaching. So many things that we can move right into with a, a noun and a verb, because a lot of times the subject will be a noun, right? Our nouns are very prevalent as subjects. So we have our subject and our, our subject and our verb if we want to use the noun as a subject. All right, so we're teaching to build sentences. We're teaching close to what they describe. So adjectives were close to nouns. And now, and we're teaching away from each other to avoid confusion. So we're not going to have pronouns close to nouns because we need to have some noun work first of all before we can do pronouns, which are for a noun. If you don't want a noun is, then you can't learn how to replace it with a pronoun. A pronoun is for a noun. So we're going to keep those a little bit later. We are not going to put adverbs close to adjectives. We a lot of times see those in grammar books thrown together. Let's do adjectives and adverbs when they are so confused by students, right? So let's not put those together. Put adjectives with nouns because that's what adjectives describe. They can also describe pronouns in the case of predicate adjectives, but we'll get to that in our more advanced lessons. And then um, adverbs describe verbs. So let's put them right now. All right, so let's talk about these adverbs. Adverbs can actually describe or modify three parts of speech. They can describe or modify Ava. And in my uh, parts of speech poster set at the Teachers Pay Teacher store, I have two graphics 
of posters that show this, but I use the acronym AVA, and you can do the same with or without my posters, and that is A-V-A. Have them coming down on the whiteboard or on the chalkboard or on a poster, and then have, remember that adverbs are AVA. They describe adjectives, the first A, verbs, the second A, and other adverbs, the third A. Ava, and that is, I have two different visuals. I actually have another one that is a picture uh, with the word adverbs all broken up and shows how it does verbs, it does adverbs, and it does adjectives. So those are the words that adverbs describe. Now, for our purposes here, early on uh, in, you know, I'm thinking more like, you know, fourth, fifth grade, and here we want, not that they don't, you don't do it a little bit in second and third grades, grade, but mostly we're talking about like really, really utilizing these for sentence building with adverbs. The first thing you think of is with them describing verbs. And that is a good way to start for sure because we can say adverbs have the word in it that they most often describe, right? So adverbs have the word verbs right in it. Adverb has verb right in its name, right? And I always tell my kids that if you have two things that are confusing to you, like adjectives and adverbs, and you have a really good trick for one of them, then the other one is the other, right? So I'll do this a lot of times with it's and it's, for example. They might not remember that ITS is a possessive pronoun, but they know that anytime they see a contraction, they're to say it uncontracted. So they're to open up that IT apostrophe S and say it, it is. They have a really good trick for IT apostrophe S, and then that will carry over to not use that trick on ITS. So whenever there are two confusing things and one of them has a great trick, you are golden. That's what I tell my students. You are G-O-O-D to G-O, good to go. <laughs> so in the case of adverbs, we can, first of all, just start out knowing that adverbs have the word verbs in them. And so we can know that adverbs will be the one that describes verbs and adjectives are the other ones. Okay, so we are G-O-D to G-O with just starting out with the idea that adverbs describe verbs. All right, they tell four things, right? And um, this is especially easy to grasp when we're talking about adverbs describing verbs. So adverbs tell how we do something, carefully run. They tell when we do something, later called, they tell where we did something, drove downtown, and they tell to what extent, extremely helpful. Now, when you get into the four things that adverbs, um, uh, the four things that they tell, it can be a little bit confusing because now all of a sudden you're talking about um, lay, um, uh, extremely helpful, that to what extent is really going to describe adjectives. Right, and even sometimes with, to what extent you can have it describe an adverb, like another adverb, like you could say, he ran extremely slowly, to what extent, extremely. So that is kind of getting into the more adverbs describe adjectives and adverbs describe other adverbs. Whereas when we first start out, we can just really focus on these action verbs that adverbs will describe. Okay, and I talked last week in the verbs about how I divide up the verbs so that they're doing being, helping, and linking verbs all together, and they're doing action verbs all together. And we want to emphasize the fact that adverbs describe action verbs, right? Now, when we get on into our more advanced lessons, then we'll have all uh, lessons that will pertain more to like high schoolers when we're talking about an adverb versus a predicate adjective and how they can tell the difference between those two things. Or an adverb and a preposition, like up can be an adverb and up can be a preposition. Um, or an adverb used to describe other adverbs and things that are a little bit more complicated. But for our purposes right now, we start out with a bang with uh, reminding students that adverbs can describe, and the majority of the time an adverb is used to, to describe or to modify an action verb, telling how, um, when, or where. So how did we run? Carefully. How, when did they call? Later. And where did they drive? Downtown. Now, carefully is pretty easy because it's an L-Y one, 
right? And that's another thing that students learn pretty early on. Um, and that is that L-Y is often a clue to us that a word is an adverb. Now I riff on this all the time. I use that as the prime example for my students of how a suffix, the words added to the end of a word, can tell you what part of speech it is. And I'll say, for example, what do you usually think of when I say an L-Y word? And they'll say adverbs. I'm like, yes. And you can do the same thing with O-U-S, knowing that that's usually an adjective, right? T-I-O-N, knowing that's usually a noun, on and on and on. So I always build on what students already know, right? We're going to take what they know and we're going to build on that and build on that, take what they already know and use it as an example. So that's just an example of how I really point out to them the importance of suffixes because they know about L-Y words. All right, so they know about L-Y words. They know that those are usually adverbs. They know that the word adverb has the word verb in it, so it usually describes a verb. And so then we can build on our sentences that we've already had, and that is the sneaky cat climbs. So now we can put our adverb in there. The sneaky cat easily climbs, right? The sneaky cat easily climbs. And we can build on that whole L-Y as an adverb and how it describes um, how he climbs, he climbs easily. So when I am working through parts of speech sentences, I use key words. Like I will say to them, if they don't know where the adjective is, I'll say, what kind of cat? And they'll say, sneaky, the sneaky cat. The sneaky cat easily climbs. How did he climb? Easily, right? So I'm asking the same questions that adjectives and adverbs answer when I'm helping them find their adjectives and adverbs. I do that with all the parts of speech. So watch some of my stories, because in my stories, I have been putting up some grading times of when we go through and grade sentences, and you can see how I teach through the grading process. All right, that is all for today for adverbs. That is our um, one, two, three, four, fifth part of speech out of 10. So we'll have five more remaining. If you want to learn more in-depth teacher training, then you might want to hop on over to the Language Arts Lady blog and watch my videos. I have 30-minute videos called How I Teach, and they go into even more detail. Thank you for joining me today on 10-Minute Grammar and Adverbs. I'll see you next time.